Welcome to lecture number 39. So, till the last lecture, what we have done is the importance of the single molecule spectroscopy, right? And we have shown that what kind of extra information a single molecule spectroscopy can give. And we also have seen that the small observation volume is essential to get the information of a single molecule. So, now question is that how to achieve such kind of small observation volume. As you remember, I said that if you take one rhodamine 6 g molecule in 1 ml of ethylene glycol, one of the solvent, right, then the if the intensity of the fluorescence is 1, then the intensity of the Raman scattering by ethylene glycol molecules, that 1 ml of ethylene glycol molecule would be 10 to the power 10. So, obviously, you will not be able to see this one intensity of fluorescence in front of 10 to the power 10 intensity of the uh, Raman scattering. But if you take uh, one rhodamine 6 g molecule in 100 femtoliter of ethylene glycol, then this intensity of the fluorescence and intensity of the Raman scattering will be very similar to each other. And uh, if you now take one rhodamine 6 g molecule in 1 femtoliter of the solvent, here it is here it is ethylene glycol, then in that case the fluorescence intensity will be 100 times more than the background Raman scattering and in this and, and in this case you will be able to see the fluorescence from the rhodamine 6 g, because for this is a single molecule. So, the number of photons which are available from the single rhodamine 6 g molecule is very very small. So, your background has to be small. More importantly, your solution right has to be diluted enough so that only the small observation volume is not enough. Your solution has to be diluted enough so that this 1 femtoliter observation volume contains only one molecule of rhodamine 6 g right. If you put many of them, if you increase the concentration, then probably in that 1 femtoliter observation volume will contain more than one rhodamine 6 g molecule, then you will lose the single molecular level detection capability. Now, the question is that how we will going to get this small observation volume which is 1 femtoliter, right. So, if you consider uh, a box like this way, let us say it is a cube right. And if each side is about 0 0.5 micrometer, right, then approximately the volume what you will going to see is about 0 0.1 femtoliter. So, you need similar type of dimension to be achieved, right. And uh, so, now uh, today we will going to discuss how to achieve such kind of small observation volume. The first technique uh, which I will discuss is based on total internal reflection method. total internal reflection method and this why we know that if I have two medium, one with a refractive index n 1, other with a refractive index n 0 and then if I have a incident light it falling on this through medium with refractive index n 0 towards the medium with refractive index n 1. And if this incident angle theta i is greater than the critical angle. So, if theta i is greater than theta c, 
which is defined as sin inverse n 1 by n 0, then there will be total internal reflection. Right? So, the beam will be reflected in this way. So, this is my total internal reflection. All the incident light will be reflected by the total internal reflection if it satisfies the total internal reflection condition, but still what you are going to see is that one evanescent field around this region will be generated, evanescent field around this region will be generated. So, this is nothing but a near field standing wave right just right here near field standing wave will be generated which is known as evanescent field will be generated to the medium with refractive index n 1 right. So, you will going to get field out of this. Now, uh, the strength of this evanescent field right, actually decaying as you go away from this interface. Suppose this is your interface and this is your total internal reflection and this evanescent field will be generated here, but the strength of this field will exponentially decay as you move from the interface to away of away from the interface right. So, this uh, evanescent field strength right decay exponentially and that can be written like this way. So, e to the power minus z by d obviously, it will start with some initial value of this field. Let me write this is i e 0 and which is the el electric field dependence as you move from away from the interface. So, here is my z right and in this case uh, my variable is obviously this z and d is given by where d is given by lambda by 4 pi n 0 square sin square theta. So, this is my incident angle. So, theta i I should write minus n 1 square to the power minus half right. So, for example, right if if let us say let, let me consider this n 0 is equal to let us say 1.5 some type of glass. Let us say this is 1.3 this like water. So, I can readily calculate the theta c value from here. So, here theta c I can calculate theta c will be around around 60 degree right. So, if theta i is greater than 60 degree right. So, let me consider that theta i is equal to 70 degree. I can choose that which is greater than theta c, then it will it will uh, fulfill the total internal reflection condition. In that case, right, I can simply evaluate what is the value of d, right? Because I know n zeros, I know theta i, I know theta, uh, I know n one, but you see it also depends on the wavelength. So I fix a value of wavelength. Let's say for this case, the value of the wavelength of the incident light is 600 nanometer. So, if you plug in all these different value, what you are going to see is the value of d and if you calculate this, you will get this value of d as 73 nanometer right. So, you see uh, this is d is 73 nanometer and this d is over here right, d, d is over here. That means, the intensity or the strength of this evanescent field will decrease exponentially right and it will be almost 0 at 4.5 times of this d value right. This is the nature of this exponential function. So, what I want to say is that this evanescent field strength is high here, but this evanescent field will going to be 0 exponentially 
see this is my exponential function right and do not forget that this is a symmetric right this is symmetric like this way right. So, even a central field strength is very high and then it is going to be 0 right as uh, the z will increase. So, I can simply uh, tell that E i E z right will be almost 0 that means, field strength is finished at a distance z equal to 73 into 4.5 nanometer which is roughly equal to 330 nanometer. So, I can simply write that means, ultimately what you are going to see you are going to get a I can describe this as roughly I can describe this as type of cone right where where this spot this is a spot this is a circle right this is the spot size of the incoming beam right here that spot size whatever I have shown is little tiny now I am expanding it. So, now that laser the light excitation light it is actually laser. So, this uh, excitation light is coming like this way this is important let me show you. So, then here is your sorry this is incident right and then reflected like this way reflected back under total internal reflection. So, what you are going to see is this is your spot size and because of this you are going to get this evanescent field, evanescent field will decay exponentially like this way, this is your evanescent field. That means, above this interface, this place where right this field exists, this field does not exist uh, below the interface, above the interface the field exists in this region. So, I have just assumed that this feature right this exponential decay will may will, will be like a cone. Now, if the diameter of this excitation light is known right, then you know this diameter right and you know how to calculate the volume of this cone. So, volume is equal to 1 over 3 pi r square h. So, if I say the diameter of this incoming light right is uh, let us say real number. So, let us say it is 10 micrometer right and 10 micrometer I can create. So, if it is a 10 micrometer and then this 10 micrometer light will come here and it will undergo to total internal reflection like this, but this evanescent field will create. So, then the radius it will be 5 micrometer and this height will be I just have roughly calculated it around 300 nanometer. So, height will be around 300 nanometer right or 0 0.3 micrometer. Right. So, using this formula you will be. So, here is my just situation that 600 nanometer light 600 nanometer light is making such kind of thing for the 600 nanometer I have calculated what is the value of uh, this height is about 300 nanometer and with that I will I want to calculate the volume. If you plug in all these values over here then what you will going to see that uh, volume is 7.8 femtoliter. So, you see just by uh, taking this total internal reflection condition you can achieve the observation volume of 7.8 femtoliter. Now, let me show you that uh, experimental setup in this case like if you use a such kind of device right. This is made of special type of glass that is what I said this is the refractive index in uh, 
your n0 is equal to 1.5. And let us say you have set up your experiment by putting a sample cell over here. This is your sample cell. It is somehow attached. So, if you have a sample, right, water solution of your sample. So, water solution is present throughout this sample, right. And you make a sufficiently dilute condition so that your fluoropores, right, your fluoropores are present throughout, but in the sufficiently dilute, diluted condition, right. These are your fluoropores. Obviously, these fluoropores will undergo a Brownian motion. It can come from here to here, it can go from here to there, they are in motion, right, all the random motion. But now, if you use an excitation light, let us say this is your excitation light and you are creating your excitation light like this. So, the diameter of this incoming beam is not very high because you want to achieve smaller volume. If this diameter, if this diameter is high, then the volume will be high, right. So, you do not want that, you want to achieve a smaller volume. So, you want a very tightly collimated beam and that will going to be focused, uh, reflected, that will be going to be reflected like this way. So, if my drawing is ok, it will be like this. So, here is your incoming, here is your outgoing after total internal reflection, right. And what you have? You have created this evanescent field like this, right. So, only when your fluoropores are present here, then only you will going to see the fluorescence, right. Because this part of your sample, this part of your sample, I mean there is no one to excite. Here evanescent field having the similar wavelength of the excitation of, of this incoming light uh, will be able to excite your fluorophore. Then you will get fluorescence only when your fluorophore will present inside this small observation volume. When the fluorophore is present here, they are dark, they are not fluorescing. And when the fluorophore is present here, so you will get the fluorescence, otherwise not. So, by this you can achieve this small absorption volume. The next uh, uh, one let um, to achieve this uh, small absorption volume is another method. The next method is called the confocal detection method. Confocal detection method. In this case, what we use, we do is that we use a lens, right. Let me draw this lens over here. Lens and this is your incoming excitation light and you tightly focus this incoming excitation light to a very tiny spot, right. Best you can do is the diffraction limited focusing. The size of the spot is diffraction limited focusing and that you can do with a laser. So, in all this uh, experiment, right, to achieve the small observation volume, right, the light source what is being used is the laser because for the conventional light source, you cannot focus so tightly, right. So, in this case, you will get uh, diffraction limited focusing. Now, this is very much applicable. Now, if I, if I show you uh, the another version of this geometry, it looks something like this. Um, suppose, you have this lens over here and your incoming beam diameter is this much. So, anyway, this will going to focus. So, if the color of this laser is let us say blue, so this part is blue and here is your blue, right, and here is your blue, 
right that is the light right now if you uh, zoom it out zoom out this part zoom out this part what you're going to really see is the following correct and again this is your sorry this is your that light so in the focal plane right the diameter is this much is your diameter but if you do same thing, same lens if you take and in this case let us say incoming beam of the same color, the diameter of the incoming beam is much more than this, obviously it will again going to focus, focal length is similar. So, it will focus in the similar position right like this way. So, here the incoming beam is like this, this is your incoming beam and here is your beam and here is your beam right. Now, if I zoom out this part, what you are going to see is that it looks like this right so here you see the spot size at the focal plane is much smaller than this but it is diverging too much so here if i again color it so this is this is your excitation light. This is your excitation light. Now, if you consider uh, this is your excitation light. Now, if you consider that your molecules are present only at the focal plane. So, condition if I impose is the following that the, the molecules which is under investigation right are present on a plane and that plane is this focal plane in this case. So, in this case if you have molecule here it is not visible, if you have molecule here it is not visible, if you have molecule here it is not visible, but if you have molecule here it is visible because it is focusing only at this focal plane. It is not visible, it is not visible, it is not visible. So, you can create a tiny spot. Right. That tiny spot depends on many, many things, basically the numerical aperture of this uh, focusing lens and you will get a very, very tiny spot. But you cannot apply this thing to the solution because in solution, let me, let me draw a, another setup for you for the solution case. Let us say you have uh, a sample stage like this and your that special lens which is called the objective lens is present over here right and you are having a incoming light over field to the objective lens and then this will going to focus right and this will going to focus it like this way right and your sample is present over here here the whole position is your sample position right your sample is present over all along over here right on top of this sample stage and the the this this excitation light let us say is like this this is your excitation light this is your excitation light so it will going to focus like this way, isn't it? 
will going to focus like this way. Now you see all over this region, all over this region starting from here to here to here to here, all over this region the molecules are being excited. If the fluoropore is present, if the fluoropore is present here, if fluoropore is present here, present here, they are not excited, but if the fluoropore is present here, it is excited, it is going to give fluorescence, it will going to give fluorescence, this will going to give fluorescence. If the fluoropore is present here, this will going to give fluorescence, sorry, this will not going to give fluorescence. If it is here, it will not, it will not, right. So, in this case, you will going to see the fluorescence from the entire region, right. And obviously, then that means your observation volume is really large. If you now decrease the concentration of the molecule in the sample, but your observation volume is more, right? That means your background Raman scattering will be much more. So your 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 aim is not fulfilled. That aim is to create a small observation volume. When it was just a uh, thin layer of sample which is uh, present in only two dimension, then obviously uh, there is no problem. I can achieve the small observation volume because nothing was on the top, nothing was uh, below that uh, plane, right. But in this case, many, many molecules are there, especially the sulphate molecules. So, the observation volume uh, is important in this case. That can be achieved by this confocal method. What is this confocal method? For this, I have one animation. So, here you see this uh, particular molecule uh, is shown over here which is colored as yellow like this molecule will start diffusing right. So, you look at here once you excite with your excitation source as I said that uh, most of the case this is the laser. So, this is uh, focused with this special type of lens I said this is my lens special type of lens called the objective lens and it will be focused on the sample. So, in the sample position this is my sample. In the sample position, the excitation light will look something like this, right. Now, once this molecule will come in this green region, once the molecule will come inside, here is also sample, this is sample because sample is large, right. But this excitation light is only present, right, in a smaller region within this sample, right. So, in this case, when this molecule will come and enter, you are getting a fluorescence, right. And you see the fluorescence can come and when the molecule will go out of this excitation region, then there is no fluorescence. But when the molecule come in over here, again the molecule show the fluorescence, again molecule come in, it is showing the fluorescence and so on and so forth. Okay, as time is up, let me finish over here and we will continue our discussion on the next lecture. Thank you very much.